people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. It's been a couple years since I did a gear video, so I'm gonna go through my gear, all the stuff I'm shooting for underwater macro and underwater wide angle and all sorts of underwater photography and video and some of the key updates I've made in the last couple years since I made the first video. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. And to kick this off, I was going to do one of those cool Instagram intros where I snap into my clothes, but it just wasn't working for me. The important thing I like to mention when talking about this gear is this gear works for me and I've spent a long time building up to this gear to get a really nice DSLR system and housing and various lights and lighting systems. So this isn't the top of the line system, it isn't the newest system, but it's what works for me and works when I'm out shooting, whether it's for myself or for social or for clients, whatever that might be. So everyone will have different preferences on the gear and what works for them and what they like, down to intricacies like ergonomics on the housing or the camera menus and how you navigate through the menus. So again, this stuff works for me, it's what I use, I love it. This is what gets the job done. So let's start with cameras. I am still shooting with the Canon 5D Mark IV DSLR, and that stays inside of my housing for underwater photo and underwater video. Now I've got the Canon 5D Mark III DSLR, and that's my topside camera. So that stays in a Pelican box or my padded backpack or other case on the boat or on the banca or whatever that surface vehicle is or the beach or my car, depending on where I'm diving, to shoot those topside shots in between dives. And it's invaluable because I don't need to open up my housing with the 5D Mark IV in it to shoot those scenes in between dives. In terms of lenses, I still have my go-to as a Canon 16 to 35 f4 lens. So this is a rectilinear wide angle lens. The f4 version is significantly lighter and more affordable than the f2.8 version 2 or version 3 these days and it shoots really high quality photos. The nice thing about rectilinear wide angle lens is that you can zoom in to subjects about this size. Let's say if you have poor visibility and you want to shoot crabs or a Garibaldi or uh, anything about this size, big giant green anemones, things like that. Um, it's perfect, or you open it up and you can shoot big wide angle in the kelp forests or wherever you might be without any of that distortion you would see from the barrel in a fisheye lens. So the Canon 16 to 35 is my go-to and I shoot in the glass Zen 230 millimeter dome port. So this is a large dome port. I love the glass because it's a little heavier. So underwater you have less front float and front lift as if you were using an acrylic dome port. Now those acrylic dome ports are lighter, so the, the whole camera system will tend to float up, but by using glass, you have a little bit less of that front float. I do have some front float still because the extension rings for the dome port are still pretty wide and pretty thick. They trap a lot of air in there. And then of course you've got a lot of air inside the dome port, but that's what makes the optics good and what makes them work. So there's a little front float, but it's a lot less with the glass dome port. And I'm still using my trusty CNC MDX 5D Mark IV housing. This thing is taking all the beating I can dish out to it up here on the Northern California coast. And I'm loving it. The ergonomics are great. Everything is working fantastic on it, just like the day I got it. I do pay particular attention. And if you haven't seen it yet, watch my gear maintenance video on how I maintain the housing. I'm cleaning the O-rings. I'm cleaning out the buttons, making sure that we don't have any salt buildup and corrosion buildup. So check out that video if you don't, because I'm diligent about doing that after every dive. And even with all the abuse, all the sitting in the, the, the sun in the car and all that camping overnight, it just holds up to all of that and works like the day I got it. So I'm still stoked on the MDX 5D Mark IV. Moving on, I have my Tokina 10 to 17 fisheye, and I rarely use this. This is for great visibility conditions, close focus wide angle, uh, basically in the tropics. When you wanna get close to a sponge or a soft coral or something like that as close focus, because this fisheye focuses very close up against the dome and then still see the whole scene behind you. So the fisheye is really nice for that. And I shoot it with the CNC mini dome. So still using the mini dome when I do use the fisheye, it's glass, really high quality, really nice optics, even corner sharpness, the combination between the dome and the Tokina. So it's a great option when you really want to get that fisheye distortion and get up close for close focus wide angle shots. 
On the macro side, the Canon 100mm f2.8 is still as tack sharp as it ever was. Some of the photos that come out of this lens are just mind-blowingly sharp, tack sharp, just really nice. So I love using this underwater for macro, as well as for product shots, low bokeh type shots, where you've got a lot of the scene out of focus. It does a great job with all of that, as long as you can use 100 millimeter focal length. So really great lens, really versatile. I seem to have broken the front ring off of it that tells you what it is, but it doesn't affect the lens or its function, so who cares? And for macro, I have a flip adapter. I think I had this by the time I made the last video. But anyways, a Saga flip adapter on here. It's really convenient because you don't have to take your diopter out of your pocket or be hand holding it and then flip it on to uh, screw it onto the dome port or anything like that. You just attach it up front, boom, shoot with your diopter, flip it back up and you're good to go. And I'm using the Sub-C Plus 10 diopter. So really nice, really tack sharp. Had it for a long time. It still works just as good as the day I got it. All right, so what next? I think we absolutely have to go to lighting here because that's where I have a lot of big changes. And my brand new video lights are the Backscatter Macro Wide 4300. And these lights are really nice, easy to use. Great button control, which is easy in thick five millimeter dive gloves or with dry gloves, um, or if you're using your bare fingers, right? Just really easy to control and see what's going on. And just really nice light source, whether you're shooting wide angle or whether you want a narrow beam for macro or for night dive, where you really want to pierce through the water and see what's going on inside those cracks or caverns or crevices. So these video lights are great. They're really versatile. They have colored filters and gels if you want to get really creative with backlighting and various colors. So I'm excited to really dig into that sort of stuff more. And you'll see more of those photos and videos coming on my Instagram and Facebook page soon. So stay tuned. The other cool thing is that the 4300s or the MW 4300s work with the optical snoot one. So you just attach it to the light and now you can shoot snooted video, which is really cool. Whether you're using the light to, to create a pinpoint backlight or you're doing a colored gel backlight or you want to do snooted video uh, up front with a traditional angle or shoot still photos with the constant light. The really nice thing is that you've got a powerful light coming right through the snoot so you can see exactly where you're aiming and really compose for that snooted video or still photos. And we'll keep the optical snoot one in hand because I am using the mini flash from Backscatter as well. So I've got the diffuser on here, which is great for a wide angle or anything you're doing without the, the snoot, but the snoot goes right onto the mini flash as well. So talk about a really small, versatile setup for macro. This goes right with my camera housing. Boom, put the snoot on here and it's just light. You don't have that heavy, front heavy system, which you'll get with, um, with really heavy snoots extended over the front of the macro port because you've got your heavy macro lens, you've got a macro port with minimal air in there. And then if you've got a big lighting system up front, it just makes the whole thing front heavy and it might mess your buoyancy up. Long story short, this is really cool. It's just a light, convenient, small setup and works well for any number of snooting purposes. So the mini flash is super versatile and I'll always take the optical snoot along with it. So now, my idea. we'll put that back here. Let's put this back here, make the table look cool and stuff because that's what we do, right? So if I'm shooting wide angle and I am shooting divers, I'm shooting reef scapes, or if I'm shooting big animals, I take my Retro Pro flashes. And these are also new since my, careful, also new and tough since my last video, but these flashes are strong, they're powerful, they recycle very quickly, they have beautiful light with a circular flash tube here, which is pretty unique. Um, I'm using the white diffusers. They have a number of different diffusers. I tend to really like the white ones, but there are also shark diffusers and a number of other accessories that you can get with the, the flashes, including the LSD snoot. And one of the key accessories I use with the retro flashes are the superchargers. So these double your battery capacity. You take the cap off of here, it screws into the battery compartment like this, right about here, and your recycle time gets incredibly fast, and you also can be shooting all day with your eight batteries per strobe. So it's really nice because as a diver's approaching or something, I can shoot more frequently, and the strobe will recycle quicker, and then I don't need to mess with changing batteries in the middle of the day. The strobes are gonna 
work all day and keep me shooting without having to futz around with all of that. So that's really important. The superchargers do it and they're great. They do add a little bit of weight, but hey, that's a trade-off. The other nice thing is when you have the superchargers attached, look at the back of the strobe. Um, it's a wide strobe, right? Because you've got the circular flash tube and all the circuitry that ties into the, the phone app and just all these cool features. But what I'm trying to say is that when the superchargers are attached, it makes a great handle to position the strobe. You get your fingers right in here and whether you've got gloves or bare hands, it just makes positioning the strobe a breeze. So you can do it really quick as divers or a big animal swimming at you, just grab and it's really fast just to adjust your strobe positioning to make sure you don't have any backscatter in the frame. So one of the other things I always have in my camera bag, as soon as I get these down here, is a Sea Life Sport Diver. So you have seen the videos, you know about the mobile phone housings. The Sport Diver is awesome. It works for my iPhone and I actually recently upgraded. So it works for the new iPhone as well. And it works for all Android phones. So you pop your phone in here. There's a nice vacuum seal and vacuum pump with a moisture alarm. So I know and, and feel confident that the vacuum works before I take my precious phone underwater. And I have it set up with a Pro Dual Beam, which is a 3000 lumen video light and also spotlight. So it's got both of those beams. So like I mentioned before, the cool thing is it's got a nice wide beam for shooting underwater photo or video, but I can set it to the spot beam if I want to do a stoot type effect or use it as a primary dive light or a night dive light. I can poke around inside the crevices or cracks, look for macro subjects, nudibranchs and things like that. So this is a really versatile setup with the Pro Duo and the Sport Diver. So this comes with me. This comes on the stand up paddle if I want to shoot stuff on the surface and want to take it diving with me so really versatile if you're into small minimal and easy can't recommend the sport diver enough another really nice thing is that the photos are already on your phone so you don't have to putz around with memory cards and sending them back and forth between your computer and external hard drives it's on your phone it's good to go ready to share so it's super convenient and another fun change since the last video are my ultralight clamps now, Ultralight came out with these anodized clamps in a number of different colors. I really like the kelp green and the blue. It just gives my rig a little bit of pop. So obviously I have these on my rig like that, or actually like this, long arm inside, short arm outside. Um, but the color is fun. It's really cool. These new clamps have a thinner thread than I had before and the holding power is incredible. So it keeps my strobes in place as I'm hiking up and down cliffs or whatever I'm doing with my camera system. I don't have to worry anymore about the, the strobes flopping down or hitting rocks as I'm trying to dodge waist high rocks in the slippery surf entries at low tide and stuff like that. It keeps everything tight and compact so I can get in and out of the water. Anyways, awesome. Loving using the new clamps, loving the colors. I mix them up. I have the red ones too. So give me a shout if you ever see those red ones on a, a post or an Instagram story or something like that, because I break those out for special occasions or fun occasions, or maybe no occasion at all. Maybe I just put them on there and that's it. And it's whatever I happen to grab. But the other piece I'm using too is Ultralight's video tripod. And this is such a game changer if you want to shoot macro subjects or scenes up close, close to the reef, close to coral, stuff like Chromis or Anthea's dancing above the, the coral. Um, if you try to shoot macro video handheld, you know it just doesn't work. Even with the best image stabilization, the camera's moving around, the subject's bobbing around the frame, and it would make even a, a sturdy sailor seasick. So it just doesn't work. The tripod fixes that. Now this mounts to basically any housing that's out there with a simple screw and a number of different um, ball mount configurations. So I've got the tray configured for my housing with two arms up front and then an arm in back. And this works so well for all sorts of my video. You'll see it as, as B-roll and interstitials between some of my other tutorial videos. If you start looking closely, you'll see those, those shots close to the ground, stable. That's from the video tripod. So I'm loving using that. Of course, I've always got my clips here for beach diving that I keep on my BCD and then also on my housing so I can clip it up, clip it off when I'm in the water and keep my hands free for shore entries across those rocks I was talking about. So that's pretty much it. That's my gear for 2022 as of now. We've had a number of upgrades from my video lights to the strobes to my dome port to clamps and arms and tripod. A lot of cool stuff. The optical snoot one. 
So I'm looking forward to creating a lot more photo and video with this stuff. I'll be getting it into the water a lot this year. I'll be doing more of my adventure dive vlogs with this gear and show you how to use it or behind the scenes. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll tell you about this gear. I can recommend gear. I can tell you how I use it or the best ways to use it and the best practices. Let me know, happy to help. So that's it. We'll catch you in the next video.